Hi, what's going on guys? This is Alfred from Practical Code Academy. In today's project, I'm going to show you how to use CSS filters. We're going to use the Blur, Grayscale, Brightness, Contrast, Invert, and Opacity filters. I hope you will enjoy this project and let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and open our project folder using Visual Studio Code. And inside this folder, you're going to find an image, empty HTML file, and empty styling sheet. You can go ahead and download the source code of this project from the link in the description. I'm going to start with the HTML file. I'm going to generate a boilerplate using Emmet, typing exclamation mark and press tab, change the title to CSS filters. Next, I'm going to link our styling sheet. So I'm going to use the link tag style.css. Inside my body, I'm going to add an h1 header. And I'm going to put that inside the header CSS filter effects. Then I'm going to have a section with a class of container. Inside this container, I'm going to have an image container div. So it's a div with a class of image container. And each image container have two things, have the image itself and the title of the image. So I'm going to add an image tag where the source having image dot gpg. And the title for this image will be paragraph original image. Now I have six effects, so I'm going to copy this uh, image container and paste it six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. For the second one here, this is going to ha have the plur effect. So I'm going to give it a class of plur. I'm also going to change the paragraph here, plur filter. Next is going to be the class of grayscale. Going to change the paragraph here also. For the next one, it's going to be having a class of brightness. where the title will be brightness filter. Also, I'm going to add filter. Next, we'll have the contrast it's a class of contrast. Next, we'll have the class of invert. This is going to be invert filter. And finally, we're going to have the class of opacity. That's it for the markup. Let's open it with live server. As you can see, the images are so big. So uh, I'm going to start with the styling sheet. First, I'm going to reset all the browser defaults. So I'm going to do margin, zero, padding, zero, box sizing, border, si border box. And next, I'm going to style my body tag or body element. I want to set the font family to Arial. 
For the background color, I'm going to use a linear gradient. So I'm going to set the background to a linear gradient. I'm going to use three colors. I'm going to use the Dodger blue. I'm going to use slate blue. And finally, purple. Next, I want to set the height of the body to be 100% of the viewport height. And I also want to set the overflow header. Next, I want to style the H1 tag, which is the header over here. So I'm going to select the H1. I want to do color white. The font size for rem and text align center. I want to do margin, top and bottom, two rem, left and right zero. Also, I want to give it some letter spacing of two pixels and do text transform to uppercase. That's it for the header. Now let's go for the container. Give it a max width of 1100 pixels. Margin auto. I'm going to give it a padding of 2 rem. And I also want to center all of the images in the middle of the screen or in the center of the screen. So I'm going to do display flex. And I'm going to do flex wrap. So they can wrap when I reset the screen. Yeah, wrap. And I want to justify the content to be in the center. Finally, I want to give it the width of 100%. This is for the container. Now let's style the image container itself. Where inside the container, you'll have all the image containers. And this is the flex items, technically, because the container is the flex container. So for each image container, we want to position it relative. I want to give it a width of 30%, height of 200 pixel, and margin of one gram. Once I save this, you can see it yet because we didn't set the width of the image itself. So I'm going to target the images, and I want to do the width to be 100%, and the height to be 100%. And I want to give it a box shadow. So I'm going to do box shadow of two pixels, two pixels, 10 pixels. And I'm going to give it an RGBA color, which is black, 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.6. So now I have this box shadow for each of the images. That's it for the layout itself. Now we have to do align the, the, <clears throat> the title of each image. To do so, I'm going to select the image container and I'm going to select the paragraph inside that image container. I'm going to do the position absolute. I want to set it to the bottom of the image, which is bottom zero, left zero and right zero because I want us to be stretched from the left to the right. Once I save this, as you can see, it's get aligned itself to the bottom of the screen here. I'm going to do some batting where top and bottom was half rem, left and right one rem. The background color, I'm going to set it to an RGBA color. RGBA value 
I'm going to give it also this 0, 0, 0 and the opacity of 0 0.6, where you can see the background actually. It's, 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 the, it's having 0 0.6 opacity or the alpha of the RGBA. Next, I want to set the color to be white. The text transform to the uppercase. There is spacing, two pixels. And that's, that's it for the image titles. Now I'm going to start working with the effects itself. So for the first image, there is no effect. I'm going to start with the plur class. And inside the plur class, I'm going to use filter property. And I'm going to use the plur function. If you use plur zero, that's the default. It's not, there's not going to be any plur to the image. If you start to increase this number, one pixel, for example, and as you can see, it starts to be blur. Every time you increase this number, the blur value of the image will be more and you cannot see the image. So if I put, for example, 50 pixels, as you can see, it's completely gone. So I'm going to set it up to 10 pixels. Now, at least we can see something from the picture right now. For the grayscale, I'm going to use the filter property. I'm going to use grayscale. For the grayscale, you can use percentage. So for example, 0%, that's mean it's, it's, it's not grayscale. And 100%, that's mean it's a fully gray. You can use any percentage in between. So for example, 50%, this is like 50% gray. So I'm going to set it up to 100%. For the contrast, class. This is also a percentage. So I'm going to use a filter contrast function and you can set up to up to 100%. But you can increase actually the value of the 100 to more than 100. This is the, the limit that you can reach. And if you can increase it more than 100, you will see the difference. So for example, I put it as 200. And now you can see have the contrast of the colors shown here. Next will be the invert filter. So I'm going to use filter with the invert function. And invert also work as a percentage. So you have a 0%, which is the default. Nothing happened to the image here, as you can see. And we can set it up to 100%. As you can see now, all the colors inverted, even the shadow of the box itself get inverted. Uh, let's work on the brightness. For the brightness, let me put in the filter, property, brightness. You also can have from 0%, that's completely black. The 1%, also it's black, 100%. Is the default and if you increase more than 100 that's when you see the, the, the brightness of the image become more increased. I'm going to put 200 and now I set the brightness to 200. For the opacity it's a percentage if it's zero percent as you can see the image completely disappeared 50 percent you have a 50% transparency in the image. And if I set it to 100%, it's, it's, it's not transparent anymore. That's all guys. I hope you like this project. If you do like the project, hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe now so you can get the latest of our videos. And as always, thank you for watching.